This is a public information broadcast on behalf of Ideologically Subverted Britain. Councillors, know your limits. As a local authority councillor in Ideologically Subverted Britain, your mental age should be equivalent to your shoe size. Remember, you are not there to think. You are there to be a government duplicator. Your job is to be a useful idiot and regurgitate, without thought, what the government tells you to believe. This is the sound of a councillor that does not know his limits. Well, I think Britain is run by a bunch of woolly-headed, half-baked intellectuals who are the result of the former Soviet Union's infiltration into the West's university system. <laughs> this councillor does not know his limits. Now here is a useful idiot councillor that does know his limits. This is a genuine email that was sent to Mark Windows from a Waltham Forest councillor. Uh, don't you saw your email and for taking the time to contact me. However, as I don't subscribe to the hugely discredited and laughable conspiracy theories that suggest that an Agenda 21 take over on the world, I'm afraid I find it of no value whatsoever. Yours. Yes, this councillor clearly knows his limits. Remember, councillors, know your limits. If you are not a councillor and able to think for yourself, why not find out what councillors who know their limits and the rest of their intellectually challenged chums are up to in Ideologically Subverted Britain on www.windowsontheworld.net broadcast live every Sunday. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chris and welcome to another broadcast. This week I'd like to speak again about the planning meeting at Broxburn Borough Council on the 22nd of May. On a previous broadcast I said that I was shocked by the shallowness of the entire meeting. In my experience I've found councillors are generally fine for the average run-of-the-mill type of things such as relocating a bus stop, moving a litter bin or complaining about youths defecating in your garden but when it comes to planning matters they are about as much use as a chocolate fire guard and I extend that personal observation to the local MP. They can't go against their party line. I got the impression the planning meeting was like a bunch of naughty school children holding a top secret meeting behind the bike shed. There was so much verbal bovine excrement floating around I was fearful it may be contagious. In fact, apart from the gentleman that spoke out against the proposed housing development, it was a perfect example of Goldilocks syndrome. This is covered in item 8.0 of my 25 page report. The infantile structure of the meeting where there's a chairman of this, that and whatever and people electing each other for various silly positions gave me the impression the system is designed to boost egos and create snobby elitism whilst preventing the public from speaking. I'm also puzzled why the councillors have separate toilets to the public. There's only one Kazi for both sexes for the public whilst there's separate male and female toilets with combination lock entries for the councillors. Strange, eh? Any humorous suggestions, remember to keep them polite, please say in the comments box. It seems the evil ones that seem intent on turning Chesant into an overpopulated hellhole have been at it again. Did their mummy take their dummies out of their mouths too early or something? What's wrong with these people? This time they've come up with a cracker called Brookfield Garden Village. The proposal is to have rabbit hutch housing with people living on top of each other like sardines. I went along to the council information day. Whilst there I could smell something. Was it cats? Was it dogs? No, it was bovine excrement. There was a series of photographic plans on the walls and 
they were am amateurish. They didn't have any key plans. The first thing they teach you in a design office is to always put a key plan on a drawing. Each plan was a mystery was in a mystery location and required the help of polite officials to tell you where it was. What got me was who has consented to this. I mean apart from those that are going to make money out of it, have the residents consented to this proposed development? Again it's tacit consent. It's been thrust upon everybody accepting that well, it's going to go ahead. Why? Who says? Again, there is no genuine consent. Well, surprise, surprise. What struck me first of all was a United Nations Agenda 2030 buzzword. Yep, there it was. And the word is sustainable. Whenever you see the word sustainable along with community, it's an integral part of a cocktail of meaningless waffle. Another one is discredited. Whenever you confront a woolly-headed half-baked intellectual or wabby for short with facts, they usually respond by saying that it's discredited. Again, it's a buzzword. In a later program I will explain more about this new type of language that uses particular words and when you know what to look for, in a strange sort of way, it becomes rather funny. Thank you for listening and please subscribe.